Hey, this is Matt McClung and I'm talking about the Two Mallet Etude. This is in 3.8 and it should have a dance feel. It's a Baroque piece originally for violin and it should feel light and bouncy and it should definitely feel in 3.8. Uh, basically, sort of a dum 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 dum, almost like a 6.8 feel. So make sure you play it that way. Not too crazy loud with the loud stuff, not too crazy soft with the soft stuff. This is a Baroque piece, so uh, the dynamic contrasts shouldn't be quite as loud and soft and extreme as maybe some of the other stuff you're used to. For my performance of this piece on the website, I used uh, the Robert Van Sys M113s. They work for this marimba and in this room. I might consider the 114s as well. They're a little bit harder, a little bit more present, and it just depends on the marimba you're going to use. If you prefer using rattan shafts, something a little bit more flexible, uh, I recommend the M222s or 223s. I think those are a very similar sound to the M113s. They're nice and soft and full, but articulate, but uh, they feel different. They feel like rattan, and that's a little bit more flexible in your hand. So if you're comfortable with rattan, that's what I recommend the M222s or 223s. When you start learning this piece, you want to think about stickings. Generally, you want to go with alternate stickings whenever possible, right, left, right, left, right, left, through the whole thing. But there are going to be spots where that's not going to work. At that point, you have to figure out where to put the doubles. And I encourage you to back things up. When you're going to put a double in, a double right or a double left, when you get to a certain spot, you might think, oh, well, I get tangled up, so I'm going to put a double right here. You might think about putting a double a few notes before that spot and it might untangle things a little bit more easily. So I certainly did that when I was learning this piece. I put doubles exactly where I needed them, but sometimes I would back up and maybe three or four sixteenth notes before the spot that my hands got tangled, I would put a double there. So just be careful when you go through. Once you figure out where the doubles are, just write them in. I know some of you out there are thinking that you'll remember them. And maybe you will, but write them in. I guarantee it'll make your life easier, uh, and then you won't have to think about it anymore. Make sure you understand that there is a measure added that's not on the printed page. It's between measure 15 and 16, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, go onto the website, the Texas Region Band website, and they'll um, they have a few pages of errata and addendums and extra information about all of these pieces. They're really useful and it talks you through what the notes are in that extra measure, which I think they call measure 15A, but it's between measures 15 and 16. So if you listen to my recording and there's an extra measure that you don't understand there, uh, go back and look at the printed material because it's in there and it's important. It makes the piece a whole lot more sensible and it's in the original version that Handel wrote. I took an example of a stretch of music measures 9 through 12 just to show what it's like if you pick different phrasings for the same stretch of music. Those four measures, 9 through 12, there's not much going on dynamically. I think they're all forte, but that doesn't mean you should play them absolutely flat. And you should start experimenting not just in that section but all over this piece with the way you personally want to phrase the piece. Put your own personality into it. So I play it four different ways. I start it loud and end it soft. I start it soft and end it loud. I arch it or start it soft crescendo and then come back down with a day crescendo. And I also put it in 316 feel. And all of those are viable options for what you would want to do. Maybe the 316 feel is a little unusual. You might not want to do that if you're really hoping to not upset anybody behind the screen when you take your audition. But it's a viable option and you should explore, like I did, different ways of phrasing different measures in this piece. It's okay to put your own personality and your own character into the piece. You do not have to sound like a machine, like a robot, like a typist. You don't have to sound like everybody else. It's okay if you decide that for musical reasons 
you want to phrase something differently, I very much encourage you to do that. As someone who has judged these things and sat behind the curtain, it is a relief when you hear someone who takes the initiative to put their own personality into the piece. It is a welcome relief and your scores will reflect that. So I encourage you to look over the whole piece and think about little subtle things you can do to put your own personality into the piece. One of the tricky spots in this piece is um, I find measures 37 through 40 and those are the triplet phrases so I think there's um, nine notes in each measure. Those measures. Uh, it was tricky for me, maybe you're much better at figuring out stickings than I am, but for me it was a little bit tricky to come up with the right sticking and I encourage you to try a number of them because any one of them could have worked for me, putting doubles in different places. I wound up just alternating the whole thing, which was a little tricky to learn, but once I learned it, that made the most sense to me and I think it sounded okay. But pay special attention to measures 37 through 40 and I encourage you to try different things and try different things than what I do. What I did um, may not work for you and that's fine. As it's explained in the published addendum on the website, the trills should start, all the trills should start on the upper diatonic note. What that means is if there's a trill on an F sharp, you would start it on a G sharp. The upper chromatic note is G natural, but that's not what you need to do. There's a G sharp in the scale, in the key signature, so if you see F sharp trill, you start on the diatonic note above that, which is G sharp. That's all explained in the addendum, but it's, it's very important, so make sure you understand that. And if you listen carefully to my recording of the piece, uh, I observe those rules and all the trills start on the upper diatonic note. Have fun and good luck.